rero nago abari nago binyorohera pe ntago biba byoroshye kunyana nsubira mu mateka yanje cyane kuko yabituma ntangira kwibuka ababyeyi banje the second one ntangira ntangira kwibuka ubuzima na chemo amaze gupfa maze kuburira ababyeyi rero nange natangiye kujya nihisha ku giti cyanjye aya niruka ku giti cyanjye twaje gusanga dusanga nta nta bantu baturengera bahari urumva ko waba gusa inkaho ri mwisi ya wenyine wabaga ugiye mu kantu kaka boxes kameze gutyo kuburyo ibiri inyuma hanga wasaga nta biteye ubwoba umvaga ko imbere aho ri ni wogomba kwimenya Well, as you know, the Philippines is the most uh, disaster-prone country in the world. These are things that we're used to. So when there was a warning that there was going to be a super typhoon, we prepared, but we did not really anticipate the gravity of it. My family is one of the biggest clan in this region. So they want me to be a congressman. You know, when uh, we became Christians, my family really uh, thought I was crazy. A global launch site was designed from the beginning to be a regional influence for disciple-making movements. The vision was, what if we formed partnerships with indigenously led churches and ministries around the world where they're driving and we're supporting and we're trying to help bring resources to accelerate something that God is calling them to do. Started with the Pasir Panjang congregation uh, in Singapore. If you travel within a five hour flying radius around Singapore, you have access to a world population of 2.2 billion people. And, and that's been bantered around mainly as a, you know, what, what great opportunities we have as a nation to grow. But that's also equally true when it comes to sharing the word with the lost. And so that attitude has, uh, has always been prevalent in the church. And subsequently we spread our wings to the, the other parts of Asia, uh, whenever there's a call, whenever there's a need. Part of what they developed a vision for was in the Philippines. And they knew that Americans had been doing this for years with mixed degrees of success and failure. And their, their attitude was, why do we need to make all the same mistakes? After genocide, it was quite difficult for everyone to think if Rwanda was going to, to make it. There have been so many questions about why did God abandon us? What good were our churches? My dream for Rwanda is to see Rwandans transformed. ATN, we are here to be a tool or instrument God can use to transform communities which can easily reach out the whole country, which can redeem and restore Rwanda. That is ATN. So whatever we do here is about transformation. When you love someone, you can do anything, you know, you, you do crazy things when you love Jesus. For him to give up everything, to me, is an example of a truly very good Christian disciple. God has been using me here in the rural setting. Whenever we go out in mission, we just don't go out and just plant a church or do anything, but we see the needs to weep with them, to, to rejoice with them having them be aware of who they are as a disciple and as a disciple maker. The Pastor Panjani is a mature church. The blessings that we got from them is that they mentored us so much with our ministry. And it's bearing fruit uh, in the Philippines in really dramatic ways. The news was Takloban was badly damaged. Thousands of people had died. And giving them hope was very important at that time. 
whenever there's a disaster or crisis, uh, you see Chito, you know, getting his people ready to go and uh, provide relief. During Yolanda, uh, what the MRN did was uh, they organized uh, the different bodies in the states that wanted to help. And there were actually eight ministries that pooled resources, and Chito and March were a huge part of that. This is unprecedented in terms of the, the scope of partnership as well as the scope of, of how much they've helped an entire village relocate from one uh, place to another and set up homes, set up their livelihoods, and also plant a church within that village. And so this partnership with the Philippines between Pasir Panjang and churches in the Philippines was already in place before we came on board. MRN was invited to come into the picture when we were clear that they would bring along with them the kind of training tools and methodology that we had been exposed to here in Singapore. We provide the coaching and support and guidance that they ask us to, but it really is, is not our project. Everything we do in Southeast Asia, we do in partnership with Pasir Panjang. We're just one of the players that are involved that God's using to start a movement of disciple making in the Philippines. He was very resistant to any new things, no hope, no trust. My hope was when we invest in Jill, he can also invest in many. We work in education, we work in agriculture, we work in sports, ministering to uh, genocide survivors. We work with uh, girls who are leaving prostitution and uh, boys who are trying to leave the streets. Now Gio leads a kingdom community, he sits down with those young street boys and they open the word of God and they read about the Jesus who loves them more than they can ever imagine and they individually talk about how they're going to obey what they read and who they can share it with. That's the power of the gospel moving from one story to the next. That's the way disciple-making movements happen. And if God can heal Jill, God can heal uh, anyone else. The great challenge is that we are not in control and we are used to developing a, a vision and strategy and then pursuing that with various tactics to achieve a predictable outcome. The Global Onset Initiative is reversing that. It's broader than we understood. It, it has impacted uh, us in ways that we didn't imagine. We've had to stretch our understanding of what God was doing. But we really love being in this servant position and following the lead of national leaders around the world. And we're just trying to run up and catch, catch up with God. One of the pillars and the objectives of my um, vision is to tell my African brothers that Americans are not our God. If all Africans leaders could understand that, that would be the deliverance of Africa. Yarumva, ni manayo nyinea. If I am not following God, I'm also I'm also living in darkness like gambling sometimes, cock fighting. Drink, drinking in others, but now that I know the truth, in I'm also reading about the gospel of Christ. Yeah, I I very thanks God that He changed my life and I already got those 
but work. The fact is, you know, Jesus prayed for unity uh, before he actually, uh, when he knew his time was limited, uh, unity of the church. And the church is more than just a congregation or a collection of congregations in one nation. It is all the different people of God around the world. And if we as a people of God um, bonded together by the blood of Jesus can come together in spite of our different back backgrounds and cultures and all that and be able to work together we leverage on each other's strengths each other's sensitivities to the local uh, needs uh, I, I believe that we, we glorify God and, and God is pleased with that <laughs>